हेलो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेलकम बैक टू एक्सोटिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी एंड मेनी टाइम्स पीपल आस्क मी हाउ शुड वी प्रैक्टिकली यूज द नवांश फॉर गिविंग प्रडिक्शंस एंड देर यू गो दिस इज वन एग्जांपल बाय व्हिच आई विल ट्राई टू डेमोन्स्ट्रेट हाउ कैन वी प्रैक्टिकली गिव प्रडिक्शंस यूजिंग द नवांश यूजिंग द डी नाइन चार्ट ओके बट बिफोर दैट वी need to analyze the d1 chart the lagna chart so i have placed both of the charts so this chart which is of a capricorn ascendant with venus in the first house is of the is the lagna chart and this chart with jupiter in lagna is the navamsha chart all right so therefore here um i have placed both the charts side by side so that we can understand about how to use specifically the d9 for predictions all right so let us start with the d1 and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then you can find my website down in the description section of the videos god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so many times people think that we should only check the d9 chart without seeing the d1 chart no that is not true that will lead to disasters so we should always start with the d1 chart and we should check uh, what is the strength or what is the situation of the d9 later and also what is the situation of the planets which are in d1 well placed or badly placed how are they placed in the navamsha chart all right and we should also check the transition so for example here if you check this is the lagna chart here we see the 10th lord and 5th lord venus which is the yog karak is in the ascendant this is a fantastic placement indeed presence of the yog karak in the ascendant because see yog karak means one who rules a trine and a kendra simultaneously so venus rules the 5th and the 10th so the yog karak is one of the best friends of the ascendant lord so therefore wherever the yog karak is sitting if he is well placed he will always do good for good for that house if we use that planet properly otherwise it can also do bad so here the yog karak being in the lagna this is extremely beneficial for the person and this shows that the uh, the person can have lot of blessings from go uh, goddess lakshmi because venus represents goddess lakshmi and if you check here moon is the seventh lord in the seventh house in own sign fantastic this is so the fifth lord seventh lord they are in mutual aspect moon and venus are in the kendra they are aspecting each other so this is one of the best combinations to have for married life uh, if the trinal lords are somehow linked with the seventh house or the seventh lord so here venus as the trinal lord is linked with the seventh house and the seventh lord also right so this makes the osco very strong for marriage so there is a big raj yoga so this is like a great blessing from his past lives because of his good karma and what about the ninth lord mercury well mercury is not directly linked i would say so what about venus venus is in the kendra it's in the lagna very good and it's in a friend friend sign which is again fantastic Capricorn is a relatively good sign for Venus to be in not a not a very great sign of course but reasonably good sign in fact uh, it is good i would say it is better to have venus in capricorn rather than you know having venus in taurus or libra sometimes because venus in capricorn keeps the person grounded and very realistic when it comes to matters of marriage and relationships okay because the traits of saturn is present in the sign of capricorn so this is very good so now after that we check the trinal lords venus we have checked then we check mercury mercury is in the 12th house it is with the 8th lord 
so that can cause some challenges uh, especially in matters of in-laws okay and this person has had difficult relationships with the in-laws and uh, somehow the in-laws have according to this person they have always contributed for, towards the downfall of the marriage okay due to some reason or the other so this can be seen as sun which is the eighth lord is involved here and then we check the eighth house again we have planets like mars and rahu there we have jupiter also which is trying to help but unfortunately for capricorn lagna jupiter is a dreaded malefic it's a very functionally malefic because it rules the third and the twelfth so therefore this is also not helping much but anyways nonetheless let us now try to observe what is going on in the navamsha chart so first we check what is the situation of these two raj yoga planets okay in the navamsha because this raj yoga is coming from this moon and venus so we must check these two planets okay so <coughs> Now we see that Moon and Venus are placed in the sixth and the twelfth. This is quite a challenging placement, I would say. But there is one good thing if you observe carefully: the Venus and Moon they have kind of gone to their opposite signs. So if you check here. moon has gone from cancer to capricorn and venus has gone from capricorn to cancer here so this this is a very powerful placement if a planet goes to a kendra sign from its sign in the lagna chart should i repeat so if if this venus or moon in the lagna chart if they are in this uh, movable sign like you know capricorn or cancer or aries or libra if they are in these signs in the navamsha that is very very good that supports the agenda of the lagna chart so now is the agenda being supported well 100% because they are they have just exchanged their signs and they have gone to each other's houses if you see okay so they are in kendra to each other okay they have crossed seven houses and they have kind of exchanged their signs therefore this is a good placement then let us check what is the situation of the 7th house in the navamsha chart that is very important the first thing that we check here is again if you see jupiter as the 5th lord is aspecting the 7th house okay jupiter is the lord of the 5th house here he is also the 8th lord of course and the lord of the 7th house is again saturn here so saturn is again in mutual aspect with jupiter so see 5th lord 7th lord in mutual aspect this is again fantastic for the married life the fantastic does not mean that the person will never have any problems but even if there are problems the person will be able to get over it and carry through it all right so that is something which is to be noted here that this raj yoga planets which are there in the lagna chart are somehow linked in the navamsha chart also and they are in kendra to each other sign wise and even here there is a raj yoga which is forming because of jupiter and saturn but aquarius has two lords one is saturn the other one is rahu where is rahu rahu is in the 11th house it is exalted here in gemini that is another very good placement for rahu uh, in fact 11th house is the best placement for rahu there is absolutely no doubt about it okay so when we are analyzing the navamsha we should always uh, take into consideration of the ascendant lords okay we should never forget so here what is going on here here the ascendant lord is saturn saturn is in the 9th house very good fantastic in virgo great sign to be in for saturn and then where where is this same lagnesh saturn in the navamsha chart it is in aquarius this is like even better so 
the person has full commitment towards the ninth house to maintain his dharma through the seventh house of marriage okay so the person is very much committed towards uh, his spouse his wife and uh, is ready to do anything to make the marriage work so that is very good and then if you check here the the dis generally we also check the dispositor of this planet in the navamsha but here because saturn is in mool trigon sign so he himself is the dispositor and point to be noted he is also in digbala okay saturn gets digbala in the 7th house so this is fantastic that means he himself is uh, willing to make the marriage work but now see the lagnesh of this uh, navamsha chart which is sun because it's leo lagna okay so this leo lagna this sun is in debility here it is with mars which is the uh, ninth lord and mars is also the fourth lord so if you see here this this, a, this leo is actually the eighth house for the capricorn ascendants okay so here the navamsha lagna is becoming the eighth house in the lagna chart okay d1 chart so this can show that uh, the prominent events of the married life can be governed by the in laws okay so suppose this navamsha lagna was virgo which house is virgo in the d1 chart it is the ninth house okay so then it can show that your father will have lot of say in your marriage okay now now this is eighth house which means your in laws which means the uh, family of the wife they are having much say in it okay and this jupiter is again virgottama there which means it is in leo in both the places okay it is virgottama <coughs> and therefore we could conclude that the most challenging placement so now here again the lagnesh is in debility here when we check the navamsha so that can show that this person will have serious issues or weaknesses when it comes to dealing with the in laws okay because son is the controller and because it's son so it can be the father of the wife so it's like the father in law and also interestingly mars is the fourth lord of mother and ninth lord of father so father in law mother in law both are somehow linked to this lagnesh okay so so uh, now uh, this is not to uh, say who is good or bad here but imagine you are this person okay then you will always feel that somehow your mother in law and your father in law they are interfering too much in your marriage and then they are not letting uh, the marriage go very peacefully okay and because this is somehow linked with sun and jupiter so this can be more related to traditions and customs and rules and regulations okay so for example uh, if suppose there is a different tradition in your family and in her family then your mother in law father in law may object to it okay that no no you 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 should do it like this you should do it like that or, yeah that's weird sometimes but this is how this person feels it all right but uh, is he himself going into all this well definitely not because saturn is the lagnesh here and he is well placed in both the charts so when the lagnesh is well placed it shows that the person is himself not involved it is a third party which is coming and interfering all right and uh, if you see here again this jupiter is the eighth lord here also so navamsha lagna's eighth lord a difficult planet when it comes to marriage so he is also in the lagna okay as jupiter although he is the fifth lord also his mool trigon sign is in the fifth house so he is primarily the fifth lord luckily so therefore we could conclude that because of planets like jupiter and sun the traits which they represent like customs ideals rules regulations and systems and principles okay lot of clash of principles could happen all right so because of that the marriage can become a very big challenge for this person and that is what this person has said that the uh, the that there is no issue between him and his wife but somehow the mother in law and father in law they they 
interfere too much within the marriage okay now <coughs> the thing is what to do in this regard well i could i have suggested him to do remedies regarding jupiter and sun because they are uh, both somehow linked and sun is also in debility you know, to do surya namaskar every day and to uh, do mantras for baman dev who is the avatar for jupiter and sun lord ram so by doing these remedies uh, his married life can improve okay otherwise uh, till the end of his life he will be facing this issue from the side of his in laws and nonetheless uh, the planets like uh, moon and venus they are supporting each other although you see in the navamsha they are not well placed individually which means venus is in cancer not a great sign for venus to be in moon is in capricorn again not a great sign but still they are supporting each other by being in kendra from their lagna placements and they are in kendra to each other in the lagna and the navamsha also so planets in kendra always support each other okay so moon is the seventh lord which is the spouse the wife so the wife is somehow supporting okay uh the marriage so there is no problem from the side of the wife all right so of course there are many other problems as usual in every day to day life which i have not discussed and we can keep going on discussing problems also or we can discuss the good things also okay so that is up to you how you see charts and what do you want to realize so this is how you can use the navamsha to pinpoint issues which a person can face in his or her married life and then you suggest remedies accordingly okay and there are many other things like uh, jupiter is in leo what remedy should you should you suggest and sun is in libra what what remedy should you suggest so it will depend on the entire horoscope of course all right we cannot generalize it for everybody but nonetheless this is a way to start uh, reading the navamsha chart and i hope you you have got the clue how to proceed ahead all right thank you very much and uh, if you are new then please subscribe and if you want a consultation you can go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him